Is the deep learning specialization worth your time and money? Almost 1 million people have already enrolled. I've successfully completed the entire course. So now I can break down what's inside for you to make an informed decision about whether or not it's worth enrolling. To be honest, I have some mixed feelings about it. We are going to look at five aspects of the course. First, an overview of the course, the structure and content, the prerequisites, how long it took me, and finally, whether or not I think it's worth it. Let's go. The Deep Learning Specialization course was created by Andrew Ng and Deep Learning AI, and it can be found on the Coursera platform. It claims that it will help you master the fundamentals of deep learning. I think it does a great job at teaching deep learning theory, and I'll talk more about how it does at teaching the coding aspects later on in this video. If you want to take the quizzes, labs, and programming assignments, then you're going to have to pay for the course. But if you just want the video lectures, then you can watch the whole thing for free. Now let's talk about the structure and content of the specialization. The specialization is broken into five different courses. And those courses are Neural Networks and Deep Learning, Improving Deep Neural Networks, Hyperparameter Tuning, Regularization and Optimization, Structuring Machine Learning Projects, Convolutional Neural Networks, and finally Sequence Models. And then each of those courses is broken into weeks of content, but each week doesn't necessarily take a week. That's just what they're called. And then each of those weeks contains video lectures, programming assignments, labs, and quizzes. So now let's talk a little bit more about the courses. The first two courses go over the theory of basic machine learning and the basic neural network where data just passes through the nodes. In the last two courses, convolutional neural networks and sequence models, you learn about some different architectures of neural networks, like the convolutional neural network model and different sequence models like recurrent neural networks. And then in the third course, structuring machine learning projects, you get a lot of good details and advice about going about machine learning. So definitely don't skip that one, even though it's a lot shorter than the other ones. One heads up about at the beginning of the course, Andrew Ng really dives into the math. You don't even really know what a neural network is before you're going into the calculations of forward propagation and back propagation, which are two different techniques used to train the neural networks. It isn't until about the third week that you finally learn about the basic architecture of a neural network. And honestly, that really isn't a bad thing. Andrew Ng doesn't shy away from the math, which is awesome because you get to really see how all the different techniques and algorithms that he explains work. Now let's talk about the different components of the weeks of content, the video lectures, the quizzes, and the labs. The video lectures are really where the course shines. There are a bunch of them at the beginning of every course and Andrew Ng holds your hand through all of the material. So it's easy to follow and you learn a ton. And now let's talk about the quizzes and labs. Honestly, I did not like them. The quizzes had a 50 minute timer and they were about 10 questions long. Every time you failed the quiz, so you got below 70%, you had three more attempts before you would have to wait until the next day. I do not know what would have happened if you failed again the next day never happened to me but it was a little nerve-wracking most of the quizzes were doable but some were pretty tricky and frustrating sometimes you had to really pay attention to the little things like the dimensions of matrices a few times i had to take about pieces of paper and draw little diagrams of the matrices to make sure i was following along with all the math and sometimes the questions were tricky because there would be true false questions where only a tiny piece of it was wrong so then the whole statement was wrong or there were multiple choice questions where there were multiple answers that were pretty good, but only one of them was the best. So you wouldn't get it right unless you picked that one. But honestly, the thing that I hated the most about the quizzes was the feedback that they gave when you got an answer wrong. Sometimes I would read the feedback and I would still have no idea why I got it wrong. One of the feedbacks even just told me to straight up go back and rewatch the videos. So that was super not helpful. All right, that's enough for the quizzes, but now let's talk about the labs. Each week of content usually had about two labs. All of the labs were required to do, but some of the sections within the labs were optional and you could skip them if you wanted to. The labs were hosted on the Coursera platform and they were basically in Jupyter Notebooks. And how they worked was he would have all the code written out for you, but there would be pieces missing. And then he would give you hints and instructions about how to fill in those pieces. He does give a lot of good guidance on filling in those missing pieces, 
but sometimes I thought it was a little bit lacking. There were a few cases where I didn't know if I was going to be able to figure it out. If you've taken Andrew Ng's previous specialization, these labs were a lot more challenging. You should definitely be comfortable with Python and different matrix operations like the dot product, transposes, and matrix vector operations. Andrew Ng specifically mentions that not keeping track of the different dimensions of the matrices is a common place where people run into bugs, and it was happening to me throughout the course. You really do need to keep a sharp eye on it. One more thing that I think would be helpful for you to know before going into the course for the labs specifically is TensorFlow. A lot of the time I would get stuck just because I wasn't really familiar with TensorFlow syntax, so I'd have to go read the documentation or just give a best guess and see if it worked. To be honest, for the labs overall, I thought that the first two courses had really good labs, but the remaining courses, I really didn't like them. At times, I found myself dreading sitting down to study just because I knew I would have to go sit through the labs and quizzes. All right, so that was a lot of negativity about the labs and quizzes, but I just want to re-emphasize that the video lectures are phenomenal. So don't let this harsh review take away from how good those were. Now let's talk about the prerequisites of the course. What should you know before you take it? I'm now gonna read some quotes that I took from their website. Learners should have intermediate Python experience, basic programming skills, understanding for loops, if else statements, data structures such as lists and dictionaries. Another quote. Learners should have basic knowledge of linear algebra, matrix vector operations and notation. One final one. Learners should have an understanding of machine learning concepts, how to represent data, what an ML model does, etc. I think that that's pretty accurate. You absolutely need to be comfortable with Python. I think you should also have a little bit of experience with NumPy, and it wouldn't hurt to have some TensorFlow in your toolkit also. For the math, like the website said, I think it would be very useful to have familiarity with linear algebra notation. Also, I think it would be useful to know about calculus derivatives and gradients. And that's it for the prerequisites. I think that he teaches a lot throughout the course, so you'll be fine with that knowledge. Now let's talk about how long it took me to do. It took me about 64 hours, which is about two and a half days. This took me a lot longer to do than Andrew Ng's previous machine learning specialization. This course was a lot harder and it had more courses to get through. And now finally, let's go over, is it worth it? But first, if you're enjoying this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. And also don't be afraid to reach out to me, comment below, go to my personal website, contact me on social media. I would love to hear from you. All right, so I think that the video lectures were absolutely worth it. You should definitely take that no matter your experience level. I learned a lot of information from it. But where things get interesting is when we talk about the quizzes, labs, and the certificate. Because to do all of those things and to get their certificate, you're gonna have to pay for the course. And it's about 50 bucks every month. If you couldn't tell from everything I've said throughout this video, I did not really like the labs and quizzes. So honestly, if you don't really want that certificate, I probably would not pay for it and I would just go through the video lectures. However, one thing I will say is that if you are pretty advanced and you want to really sit through the labs and get into all the details of them, then maybe it would be worth it. But if you're just starting out trying to wrap your head around deep learning and take an introductory course, I don't think that it's really worth it. I think that a better thing to do for the beginners is to instead go find some PyTorch courses and start doing some projects now that you have the basic theory that Andrew Ng presents in this course. And one final note about the certificate, I did end up getting it. And people always wonder about how useful those certificates are. So I now have certificates from Andrew Ng's machine learning specialization and this deep learning specialization on my LinkedIn, which you can go check out. But I don't have recruiters reaching out to me begging for interviews. However, it is something I do have now that could make me stand out against other candidates. So at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide whether or not it's worth it. All right, everyone. If you want to continue expanding your knowledge into the field of artificial intelligence, then I really think you'll like this video I put on the screen and also in the description below. Thanks for watching.